Time is money. The faster you edit, the more videos you can create, the more you earn. No sh here are 10 tools that will speed up your video editing. And this is not another generic chat GPT generated tools list video. I actually did research, but also included a lot of tools I use myself. The first tool on our list is called frame.io. Long feedback emails are a huge waste of time for you and them because they need to manually input the timestamps. Then they need to mention what they need you to change at that current moment. And then you can move on with the corrections. So. This tool is super simple. I uploaded one of my reels right here into Frame.io. It basically works kind of like a Google Doc where people can comment on the side if they want you to change something in the document, but this is strictly for videos. And this is from the perspective of the client and they can just type in any kind of comment they want. So for example, please make the paper plain animation smoother, right? And you as the editor can simply hover over the moment where your client gave you a note and you can see the exact time frame and comment your client gave you. It not only saves you time, but also your client. It offers a free version. There are also paid plans, but if you have an Adobe subscription purchased, you automatically get access to the paid version of this. Number two on our list is Jitter.video. And it's actually a tool I use quite frequently myself. It basically offers various customizable motion graphics. And I find that most of the motion graphics on this website are really frequently used by editors. And since the free version is super capable, you don't need to spend a few hundred bucks on a motion graphics pack. So I prepared some example animations you can create using this. For example, the Twitter logo, everything is customizable. You can even change the logo itself, the colors. I need to duplicate it in order to edit because this is just a preview, but let's just move on. For example, this super cool Premiere Pro logo. I think they also have After Effects as well. I remember I used this animated icon pop up for my pitch video back in 2024, something like this, a Twitter post animation, an iMessage conversation template. I used this in an intro for one of my clients. And I actually think this animation could be used by many editors editing videos in the finance niche. Like, look at this. Groceries, utilities, transport. Of course, we can edit everything, but Super cool, I think. There's this basic five star animation. An iMessage template, I think I used this in the reel I showed you before, right at the end of the video, but I changed it to an Instagram logo, something like this, and it turned out super cool, I love it. And as I mentioned, the free version is super capable. They offer exports to 720p 30 FPS, but the motion graphics I export with the free version are super high quality. I don't know why, but it works well. Plus you could probably use some sort of video upscaler. One pro tip I want to share with you when using Jitter is, this is from the reel I showed you before, is that you can export with a green screen background and then you can use Ultra Key to remove the background in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. And now I notice that when I'm exporting videos with this green background on Jitter, it's much faster. I can change the type to MP4. That's much quicker than using the WebM transparent version. Yeah, that, that takes a lot of time. The third tool on our list is called Gling. You probably heard about it already and might have tried it if you're an editor because it was quite popular a few years ago, I remember, but now not many people are talking about it. So let me mention this, especially if you're new to editing. Well, it doesn't transform videos into captivating content, but what this tool does do is it edits a roll footage for you. Yeah, literally for you. It removes the bad takes, the silences. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. But think about how many hours did you spend on editing a roll for the past few months? or years. Well, Gling will do that for you. So here's a short tutorial. Just drag over your footage, it cuts silences, cuts the bad takes out using their AI technology, whatever. And you can do text-based editing right here. So if their AI models make a mistake, you can still correct it using the text-based editing pretty much. And I can export it into an XML file format and import it into Premiere Pro. And it looks like this just like edited air roll footage, but it was done automatically for you. Okay, it sounds marvelous, but what's the catch? Well, it doesn't always do a perfect job. First of all, you do need to manually introduce the J cuts, the L cuts, you know, and you need to remember the fact that a robot doesn't have feelings or it doesn't sort of have that instinct of how to paste the cuts correctly. So this won't help you with that, but what it will help you with is with those basic cuts and getting rid of those bad takes. And that will save you a lot of time because you will not need to rewatch those bad takes every now and again and verify whether, okay, this is what I want to leave in the video. This is what I don't want to leave in the video. However, take this tool with a grain of salt because it does have some bugs. When it comes to the pricing of Gling, you get one free export with all premium features. So you can export to the XML file and you can buy monthly or annually. Next on the list is Listery. 
Super simple tool, yet super helpful. Let me go into Premiere and let me just double click the control button. And let's say I want to search up a fart sound effect. Drag it over into the timeline. It was that simple. You don't need to open up the folder and look for the asset. Maybe it's in this folder. Yeah, luckily I found it. This will search up your entire computer. It will analyze all the files you have. It's much better compared to the Windows Explorer search engine. It works 10 times as fast, literally. Next on our list are Motion Array, Envato, and Story Blocks, and etc. Because I'm talking about these sort of apps or websites or providers in general. You know, using Pixabay and Pexels and the YouTube audio library for finding music and stock footage and maybe even sound effects. Yeah, Pixabay offers sound effects as well. It, it works, okay? But why did I put them on the list? Well, these stock footage, sound effects, music, asset providers, they all have the best content filtered in. And because of that, you end up spending less time scrolling through Pexels trying to find the best footage for your use case. Because yeah, those free websites do have some good stock footage, but you can also find loads of shitty footage that you need to scroll through until you find something that works. These guys, they have it figure out. They know that creators and editors come here expecting good quality footage, expecting that they won't need to scroll through the shitty stuff. And that's what's going to save you time. The pricing varies. All of them are paid, but they've got pretty similar pricing, to be honest. Now, for some editors, this might be super useful. For some editors, not necessarily. Because if you spend most of the time creating these super advanced, after Effects animations, I don't feel like this is going to help you that much because you don't use stock footage as much anyways and the sound effects, you can find them online for free. Next on our list is Mixkit. Now, this is a free alternative to the websites I mentioned earlier. It's like the middleman between Pexels and Pixabay. I'm mentioning it on the list because I feel like not so many editors know about this website. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just want you to know that this exists. And so as I mentioned, this is basically a free alternative to Storyblocks, Envato, Motion Array. So why is it free, you might ask? Well, they've got way less assets available compared to those big guys. So they've got stock videos, stock music, sound effects as well. Also video templates. You won't find that on Pixabay or Pexels, for example, let's say Premiere Pro. They're not life-changing sort of assets, but you might find something useful here, especially if you're on a tight budget and you want to spend money. So yeah, this is totally free. There's no pricing here. Next on our list is an app called Suno. It's basically like chat GPT, but for music. You enter the prompt and then you just hit create and it will generate you a track that you can implement in your video. It looks something like this, but how does it save you time? Instead of scrolling and looking for music that different music providers offer, like Artlist or maybe YouTube Studio, this will save you time because you can simply describe what you're looking for, what feels right for that moment in the video. Just use your words and it does a really good job at visualizing, actually audioizing your vision, so to say. I'm gonna be honest, I don't use it that much, but I have heard that editors do actually find this useful. When it comes to the pricing, well, the basic plan, you do get 50 credits, but you do not get commercial terms, whatever that means, but basically you're not allowed to use this commercially, right? Then you've got the pro plan, that's when you can start using the tracks commercially. Next on our list is Autopod, and this is strictly for editors who need to edit podcasts. But if you do edit podcasts, this will save your ass, quite literally. It's a super simple, easy to use tool, but it does the job done. Let me explain. So you've got a client who sends you over a podcast recording. Let's say that there are three speakers. One camera is focused on speaker number one, the second one on speaker number two, the third one on speaker number three. You get three separate audio tracks. One is for speaker one, one for speaker two, one is for speaker three. And then there's also a camera that's recording the entire podcast crew or all the podcast members, right? You go to Autopod in Premiere Pro and you basically give Autopod the information it needs. You tell them, okay, this speaker is this camera, this speaker is this one, this one is this one, and then this camera is for all other speakers. If they start shouting and fighting on the podcasts, it will switch to the camera recording all three speakers, right? And then you just hit run and it does it. However, you need to make sure that each speaker has their own audio source. Or else I had a situation where I got three camera angles from a client and I only got one audio source. And in that case, the tool became absolutely and utterly useless. So make sure to ask your clients to record on different audio tracks. When it comes to the pricing, there's only one plan right here, but if you do edit podcasts, don't hesitate buying this. Next on our list is EverHour. How can you know your hourly rate if you don't know how much time you spend editing your videos? That's where time tracking tools come in. 
and I use EverHour and I'm actually using it right now in order to track the time of recording this video. And thanks to this, you will also be able to notice how you evolve as an editor because for example, two months ago, I was editing this video, this type of video in 10 hours and now I'm able to do it in seven hours. You probably wouldn't be able to notice that if you didn't have ever hour. One more scenario where this can become useful is, let's say you decided to purchase a Envato license, right? And you wanted to check how much faster you're able to edit the video thanks to using this tool, right? And then you notice last time I was editing this video for X amount of time and now I'm able to edit it in like X minus two hours of time or three or something like that. And let's say you started introducing Gling into your workflow and you notice that, well, yeah, the A-roll is edited, but I had to face some bugs, which I mean, at this point, I really don't know how much time I spent doing this. Does this make sense or doesn't it? And then you go to every hour and then you see, oh shit, I spend one hour more editing the A-roll. And then you can actually see how much time you spend on work per week because your brain might think, Oh, well, I've been editing for this whole day long, but then you realize, oh, shoot, I was actually watching quite a few YouTube videos during the day. I also spent a few minutes on Discord, and I also did go to the gym, and then you realize, oh, shit, I actually spent six hours, not 10 hours working today. And then time is the most valuable asset you have. So if you're able to monitor it and track it and make conclusions based on it, then you're on the right track. Maybe it's okay watching YouTube videos, but maybe I should only watch YouTube videos for three hours a week and only videos that give me value. You get the point. And then you can also calculate your hourly rate per project. So let's say your client paid you 600 bucks to edit a video. Now you just basically divide it. If you didn't have ever hour, you wouldn't be able to know how much time you spent. Now that you know that, you know that this client is earning you 50 bucks per hour. But you've also got another client who's paying you, let's say $800 per video, but you need to spend 20 hours on editing it. That means that your hourly rate for that client is only 40 bucks per hour. And now, yeah, theoretically, this client is paying you more on paper. But in reality, this client is actually paying you more. Next on our list is Sketchfab and CG Trader. And these are websites that offer 3D models. So how the fuck can that save you time? I actually explained why that can speed up your workflow in After Effects. I also posted a YouTube short about it, so you can check it out on my channel as well. But why can 3D models can make your workflow in After Effects way faster? Those 3D models are super simple to use. Look, you can keyframe the movement. They're very easy to move around. So first of all, instead of spending a few hours creating your own 3D models in Blender, this is a much faster alternative. And second of all, because of how easy they are to implement in your projects, you end up saving time because they look super advanced, they look super cool, and then instead of spending 30 minutes creating a more complex animation in After Effects, you fill in a few spots in the video. Of course, don't overuse 3D models, you still need to create some complicated animations in After Effects, but you can fill in some moments in the video with those 3D models, which are super simple to implement. And that might even save you a few hours, especially if you're working on a long form project. I actually showed you how to create this animation and also this graph animation in After Effects in this video. It will pop up somewhere in the corner right here. So make sure to check it out. If you found this video useful, please make sure to consider subscribing to my newsletter where I share more of these kind of tips, insights, lessons I've learned. And by subscribing to my newsletter, you'll get access to this assets page, which gets weekly updates. And it basically refers to the assets I create or use in videos. You'll also probably be able to find this entire presentation I created today day with clickable links to all the tools I mentioned on this website right here. So loads of value entirely for free. And you can access this stuff super quickly. You don't need to watch YouTube videos. However, the YouTube videos come with good insights. You can also subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you found this video helpful. And if this video looks interesting to you, make sure to go check it out.